It's the 29th of September, 1444, St. Michael's Day. It's morning, and we're standing outside the newly rebuilt Askeby Abbey. Only a few months ago it was consecrated with full ceremony. It is uncommon that the public is allowed into a convent, but Abbas Ranghild has in fact promised a little guided tour before Mass. Down here by the gate to the Sörderschöping Road is the porter's lodge and the guest house with a chapel for travellers, just as in other monasteries. Askeby is a Sturtian monastery and lives according to the rule that everyone who is a guest at the convent should be received as if he were Christ himself. And the traffic here on the road between Linköping and Sörderschöping is intensive. There are certainly travellers and wagon drivers who take the opportunity to visit the convent on this stretch that takes them several days. Now we make our way up the path to the convent gate. Here on the right is the kale yard, the great garden of the monastery. On the left we have one of the carp ponds. And up there we see a rather impressive wooden building. It's called the manor. Long ago it was a royal manor, but now it is used as a guest house for prominent visitors. Several kings have stayed here on their ceremonial progress round the country. We shall take a bird's eye view of the convent to give us an impression. As you see, the church and monastery are quite high lying. Don't they shine like a jewel in the landscape with their clear and bright colours? They differ quite a lot from the other buildings in the area. People speak of the white church and the red convent church. Now they're joined together, but the colours in fact tell of two building periods. The white church from the first half of the 12th century is built in greystone. Initially it belonged to the royal manor, and even though the parish only has two or three hundred inhabitants, it is a goodly size. But it was almost certain used by the convent too, when it was created in the 12th century. On the ground floor of the tower is a chapel for grandees, and on the upper floor a council chamber and courtroom. It goes without saying that it takes time to create a structure like this. Furthermore, over the years it has been damaged by several fires. The worst one happened in 1377. Then only the tower escaped. The reconstruction of the convent church was in fact not complete until 1418, when it was consecrated, and the convent buildings only a few months ago, that is, all of 26 years later. Look now at the eastern range of the convent. Isn't it handsome? Inside are the chapter house and the abbess's room, among others. On the upper story are the nuns' dormitories, and the extension on the gable end is the latrines. In the south range there's a warming room for cold winter days. The larger building you see, that's the dining room, and to the west is the kitchen. The western range contains dormitories, mainly for lay sisters and for employees. <laughs> 